Good morning, YouTube. So we're pulling in at right around 270 watts on the EP Solar charge controller. It's got 16 volts and about 17 amps, and it's 113 volts on the three series panels at 2.3 amps. Yeah, I think it was up in the 5 to 600 watt range earlier this morning. It's right around noon now. So we're backing off on the charging there. The SBMS 120 is still putting out full power. Yeah, not sure if the screen shows up, but we're bringing in 14 amps from two parallel panels. Those are 270 watt panels into the SBMS 120. So I just wanted to go over a bit of the solar panel wiring that I have. So it's probably four or five years ago that I built the solar panel rack that's just right above the patio roof here and I had room on the rack for four portrait mode full-size panels which is about four meters I think around 14 feet total width and that's enough room like I say for four panels and at the time you know I wasn't sure what I was going to be running up there so I did all my wiring with 10 gauge cable 10 AWG and the reason for doing that is 10 AWG is the biggest approved conductor to put into these MC4 connectors which I need to plug these into the solar panels and that's rated for 30 amps in most uh, wiring tables. My solar panels actually when I started I just had a 120 watt panel which was only a little over 3 amps. Then I went to the 270 watt panels which were in the 8 to 9 amp range and now I've got the LG 335 watt panels that put out right about 10 amps at full load. So I'll cut in a shot of a, a resistance table And as you can see in that resistance table, 10 AWG, which is about equal to 5.6 millimeter square, is rated at 1 ohm per thousand feet, or it's 3.28 ohms per kilometer. But if you break that down into ohms per foot, you're looking at one milliohm per foot of wire. So most of my wires that run from the fuse box up to the solar panels, I think the shortest one is about 15 feet and the longest one is about 25 feet because as I go up, I've got to go from the closest panel all the way to the farthest panel. The panels are kind of on a 45 degree angle to the roof. So roughly the average length of the cable is about 20 feet and then you've got one wire for the positive, one for the negative, so there's 40 feet of wire that the current flows going up and then coming back to complete the circuit. So you're looking at 40 times 1 milliohm or 40 milliohms per wire as far as resistance and as far as voltage drop you're looking at about 400 millivolts if you take 40 milliohms times 10 amps, which is what one panel does, that gives you 40 times 10 or 400 millivolts out of the maximum power voltage on those panels is about 33 and a half volts. So you're losing about 1.5% of the voltage and if you look at the power loss, again taking 40 milliohms and doing I squared times R, you've got 10 times 10 times 40 gives you 4 watts of loss for every cable that I use. Right up here, I'm running 3 panels in series through 1 wire. I've got 1,000 watts of panel up on the roof and I've got four watts of loss through the wires. Now if I ran those three panels in parallel, I would have three wires and three times four or 12 watts of loss. So if I run in parallel, I pick up an extra eight watts of power loss in the cables. 
So right now the the EP solar is limiting me to about 640 watts maximum output because it's limited at 40 amps of charging current and because of that I can only get 640 watts at 16 volts which is my battery voltage and that means I'm losing 360 watts with this controller because it's throttling. The next thing I want to do is step this one down to just two panels in series that's the only combination I haven't tested yet. And then I'll take the third panel off of this one and I'm going to put it over on the SBMS 120. Now there I lose 50% of the output, but right now I'm losing 100% of one panel. So as far as series and parallel, you know, I don't have that long a wire run. Like I say, 15 to 25 feet. I've used the biggest cable that you can fit into an MC4 connector. And then for me, having the panels in parallel is actually a bigger advantage. It allows me more flexibility because if I have all the panels in parallel, I can switch them around down here. I can move them from this guy to that guy back and forth just by moving some wires around. If I change series and parallel, I have to do that up on the roof and that's a little bit harder to do. I've got to get out ladders and get my uh, my platforms to get let me climb up on top of the patio roof so it's a little less convenient to work on the wires up above. I lose four watts by using everything in parallel but I gain in terms of convenience. Now that may not be the case for everybody if you've got really long cable runs to your solar panels then voltage drop is a really big deal for me, it's, it's well less than 2%, which is what the kind of the recommended voltage loss threshold is. I think what I'm going to do, my next project will be pull this one back to two panels in series up on the roof. And then I'll take the third panel in parallel and connect it over here. So he'll have three panels total and that should give me about 25 amps maximum here and then I'll have close to 40 amps here which should give me about 65 amps which I think is about the most I can get out of the panels that I have now and then I still have one of the two 70 watt panels that uh, had a failure on it I need to get that repaired and then that will be going in here which should give me about another 9 amps Although the, the panels that feed into this, I have one on this face of the roof, I have one on the other face of the roof, and then I have one that's facing due south. So I've got kind of a northeast panel, a southwest panel, and then a south panel once I move it in here. So that current is spread out over the day. So it starts out pretty early in the morning and it goes quite late in the afternoon. But I never get all three panels at peak output because they're all facing different directions. So on a, on a sunny day like today, as I mentioned, I was getting limitation here. This controller was throttling at about 40 amps, which is 640 watts. The advantage of having three panels in here is on a cloudy day, I can get 300 watts out of this charge controller with full overcast because I've got a thousand watts coming in and if I can get 30 percent of that that's 300 watts so I'm getting a lot of current on cloudy days but not so much more on a sunny day I only get twice the power that I do on a cloudy day so just trying to uh, optimize my power output and since we're coming into summer now I'm thinking I will move that one panel over to the SBMS 120 try to get a few more amps of charging and then 
If I keep everything in parallel, I can then easily move panels between these two controllers because maybe for the winter I might want to run three panels into here and then in the summer run most of them into the SBMS 120. So yeah, the parallel panels give you a lot more flexibility. Series might be a little more efficient, especially if you have long wire runs. But I don't have long wire runs, so I just don't see a lot of benefit. I see a little bit at the very end of the day, because at the end of the day, if you're running at 16 volts, you might only get one amp. But if you can run this at full series, voltage 100 volts at one amp I can still get a hundred watts out of here so there is a little bit of advantage at the very early and very late in the day but that's why I want to try two in series and see if I can get some of the advantage of having two in series and then get the advantage of having the rest in parallel on the SBMS 120 so hopefully that helps clear up some of the questions about series versus parallel. I mean, they both work, but it depends on the situation. How many feet of wire or how many meters of wire you have, what gauge wire, and where your connections are made. So in my case, I run separate cables from each panel. So there's a separate cable like this from each panel down to my fuse box which is down here on the ground so I don't have a combiner box up on the roof and it's just a lot easier to grab a screwdriver and walk up to my fuse block and reconfigure the panels there than it is to drag out the ladder and my boards and climb up on the roof to get to things. So anyway if you have any other questions uh, post up in the comment section down below and I'll put some of the other uh, system videos uh, over here on the left side. And as always, thanks for watching.